here is that the marijuana indoor grow on uh, 23 in Santiago is out of business. And the rumor is that they are no longer in business because they were putting their drain water out on the ground. And I know at a planning meeting that came up during the planning meeting, like if the three or four people that were going to go there to observe whether they were using uh, odor uh, filters and whether what they were doing with their overrun water. Mm -hmm. So if that's true, my yeah, question is, there, what true. about the other indoor growth yes. in the country? Yeah, I mean, Listen to what her last part of the question was. Well, I said, if it's true that they, they, you know, they've left and gone to Jackson and it's due to the fact that they had overrun water polluting the ground, what is the situation with our other indoor grounds in the That's the question. Okay, I can only speak for Pure Green. We did have a meeting with them. Okay, it was not, um, it was just several people from the planning committee, and so we didn't have a quorum of any type. But we did have a very good meeting with them. They came very, very prepared. We asked them, first of all, about the uh, smell. Um, they had already ordered uh, some uh, materials and things to take care of that problem, and if that did not take care of that problem, they had further invoices that they had already looked into. I do mean they came prepared. Okay, and they are aware of the situation. I've gone past there several times. I have not smelled it yet. Mm -hmm. um, second of all, they are not moving out. Okay, they did move their processing out. It is automated now, the processing of the marijuana, and that was taken down to Jackson. Okay, that relinquished up here, I think, 60 jobs. 40 to 60 jobs, okay, that it took away from us up here. And that went down to Jackson. Um, no, they are not closing, okay? So is does that answer your question? Yes, it's just a rumor now that I wanted you to clarify if it had something to do with the runoff water. That was my runoff, question about our other two indoor grounds. Okay, okay. the runoff water, um, Eagle has been, they have been working with Eagle on that problem. And at this point, that's being yeah. Made. They're not they're not running any water right. out into the rest that of the water ground. is being trucked out <laughs> yeah. um, at this point. So that is not going into any contamination site here. That's why I come to you to ask rather than the rumor mill that goes around. Well, we appreciate and, that. And the other uh, thing is, it's just a comment for you, Pat. You do an excellent job. But when we're getting this treasurer's report, mm -hmm. and you're stating this is what we've got in the general fund. Mm -hmm. In reality, there's actually more because part of the general fund money is in a CD or mini money market. So it would be great to know exactly just what do we have that's contributed to the money uh, to the general fund as well as the marijuana that's sitting in CDs and money market. Okay. Because we, we actually do have more than $230,961 in the general fund. That is correct. Is it that, isn't a while weekly you do it? Because the total is right there, isn't it? And that's um, the total of all funds. The total of all funds is there, okay. but the money Sorry markets, uh, the money markets out of um, Huntington, the fifty thousand, the Horizon, uh, one hundred thousand plus, and then uh, Horizon, uh, two hundred thousand. Okay, those are all out of the general fund. Okay, so okay but yeah, you so know that, that, but I don't know that looking at it. Thank you very but much. I, know, I, I do a great job. job. I'm not, not, I'm just it would be helpful to know. You know, you're sure. That is good to know. However, yeah. you know, you, you guys want to can, uh, their money. I'm, I'm learning yeah. too. So, so no, that's it. Okay. And, that <laughs> and, and I was mistaken when I said the total of the balance here, which is shown at 1664, that, that's including funds from other funds. So, right, just right. general fund was question that, yeah, I can yeah. see what's asking. Yeah. My, excuse me for the button. Name, so. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Loretta. Um, Sure. I make sure. a sure. well, the balance on, bear in mind that this is July 31st on this fund balance. That doesn't include the checks that are, that are on the book of bills for this yeah. month. Yeah. The balance that we have in there is on the bottom. Yeah. Thank you.
I appreciate your input. Yeah, definitely. Anybody else? Yes. Hi there. Um, so I would like to read an email that I sent to Pat earlier this week, and it was sent to Pat particularly because she is both a member of the Board of Trustees and the Planning Commission. Um, uh, a week or so ago, when me and Derek came into your office and spoke to you and Tom, I had mentioned my expectancy for the Planning Commission to begin to draft regulations for short-term rentals. I see the new zoning ordinance defines the term and allows them with no guidance or restrictions. Honestly, I find this unacceptable. Short-term rentals are here and expanding, and local governments all over the state have decided they need to be regulated, and I would urge our township to do the same. This is an issue that we should have begun to be addressed by the Planning Commission years ago, but as of yet has not been adequately confronted. The longer the township waits to address this issue, the more complicated the situation is going to become. As a neighbor to three short-term rental units, I will not stop bringing this issue up until steps are taken to have our neighborhood protected. Having multiple rental units that change guests every single day is the equivalent of living next to a motel. You have no idea who your neighbors are. They aren't neighbors. They're customers of a business. There is a constant nuisance of increased traffic, loud disorderly conduct, and constant campfires that are never extinguished, and lights that stay on 24-7. A small portion of the guests are quiet and respectful, but I would say they are not the norm. With each new renter, there's the excitement of starting their vacation, followed by noise, drinking, and partying that seems to be the nature of getting away and going up north. And since there's no hosts living on the property, they have no initiative to keep their behavior respectful. This undermines the reasonable expectation of long-term, year-round, tax-paying property owners to have peace and privacy in their homes and yards. If you have an issue with a real neighbor, it's easy to talk to them about this issue and resolve it civilly. But when you have a rotating circus of clowns next door with the same issues occurring day after day and a landlord who won't speak to you, it's impossible to address and resolve these issues. Regulating these is a no-brainer. Annual registration fees per rental unit will bring in revenue for the township. And having restrictions on both the length of the rental allowed and days per year allowed is another great idea that many townships have enacted. A couple townships over, Whitney Township has restrictions that require short-term rentals to be rented for seven days minimum by each renter. This is great because it weeds out, weeds out the riffraff who want to come and party for a night or two. If you're staying somewhere for a week, you're probably going to be more respectful of the neighbors. And if the township's uh, short-term rental ordinance has fines for non-compliance with their regulations, guests have more initiative to be well-behaved. Ensuring all properties are in compliance with zoning ordinances is also crucial. Other townships have provisions like you can rent a short-term rental out for no more than 28 or 60 or 90 days per year. Other communities like Tawas half the amount of properties they'll allow to be used as short-term rentals in order to maintain housing for year-round residents. Other municipalities restrict how many properties the owner can operate. Other municipalities allow short-term rentals to occur on a property that is the owner's primary residence. Without restriction, it creates more incentive for vacation rental agencies to gobble up more and more properties to rent for profit. There is also the issue of these rental agencies and property owners circumventing the typical regulations, licensing, taxes, and insurance that are required for a bona fide lodging establishment. These rentals hurt legitimate lodging because they are not subject to these same regulations. This is a commercial operation operating in a residentially zoned area that needs to be subject to special use permits, application fees, and other restrictions. We had made, hoped to make our home on Green Drive our forever home and live in a community where we knew our neighbors and had a sense of safety, peace, and privacy. However, our lives have been overturned and hopes to raise a family here shattered by the commercial rental development that ruined the once peaceful home and yard we had. Allowing short-term rentals is only good for the owner of the rental, not for the neighbors and the long-term residents of the community. We would have never bought a property next to a motel, but now that's what we own. And the township's failure to act has only compounded the problems we're facing with these. We are both immensely frustrated and have suffered a marked decline in our mental health and quality of life due to the stress of this issue, and I am eagerly awaiting the township and planning commission to make a move and begin regulating these in a reasonable, logical way that puts the rights of long-term residents first and strives to maintain the residential nature of our neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Nancy. Um, I was going to wait until the end, but I do have a question when it comes to this. I know this property that you're speaking of and it brought to light. Was any of this resolved as far as I'm aware the zoning was incorrect for the square footage of the buildings and the lot and the setbacks? Is it zoned commercial or residential? All of these have been questions going on for God a year now and I'm still hearing about it being brought up in meetings 
and I thought this was all taken care of. Have all of these inadequacies been taken care of or resolved? Anything, Art? Well, uh, if you look at the zoning, as far as like waterfront, they are allowed. Uh, they, they even allow group homes, uh, in, -house, in home businesses, so. So they allow commercial? That is the zone commercial? Mm -hmm. Yes, they, they allow, they allow uh, Airbnbs, they allow bed and breakfast, they allow group homes, I've seen group yes. homes, uh, they do restrict it to one family, one family in, in the home. But uh, I'm just going by what's what's on the, the zoning ordinances. And right. So if, I, if, you, I, if you look at uh, Lakefront, uh, Lake Shore and Lakefront, they're, they're, they designate a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, the lake, the Lakefront would be on the, across the road from them. From the lakes. Do you but, have to uh, get a special permit? Do you have to come to get that rezoned because it's residential property? I see it's blue all along in there. It's not commercial. It's Lakeshore residential. It's Lakeshore residential. Great Lakeshore residential. So, right. if you're putting a business, don't you have to come in for a variance? Not if it's in that zoning ordinance that said it's permitted use. If it's within the, if it's within the zoning ordinances. We don't have much choice. Right. And the square footage. Uh, square footage, thousand twenty. Yeah. But but some places were started prior to that zoning that ordinance coming into effect. So uh, we we try to be. You know, the state allows yeah. the state allows for footage for square footage to be additive with the rooms above. Right. And that's how that got done. So when did where the that work? Yeah, anymore. After it was already done, and where we got in when we. Updated zoning ordinance where it says yeah. footprint on the ground. Right? When was the, the last? 20. So it's when that was started, excuse me. You go for it. So that when that was, those units were started, the square footage on the ground was 750. When did the zoning ordinance? I believe so. Flat. It has not been uh, totally adopted yet. So it hasn't been adopted, so it's right. not valid. I believe the plat says in Oak Park Shores, the minimum square footage house is 500 square foot, right in the plat laws when the plat was developed. That also says that only Caucasian people are yeah, to own property. Yeah, I got it right here in 1952. Shores. Some of the, uh, the old park really? shores. Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, highly antiquated. It also says for only residences. Okay, one person okay, at so, a time, please. Yeah. One yeah. Well, he so, interrupted. Miss Nancy Silly had the floor. Yeah. So that was just my question. I'm surprised to hear this. I thought this was all resolved. At the line site, I, I do. I would think if that happened next door to me and I was a residential house, I would have a lot of issues just as if it happened. Eagle was involved in the place, yes. Right? Eagle was involved, yeah. I mean, uh, there's only so much we can do when, uh, yeah, Nicole when all the King, permits are Nicole King yeah. visited the yeah. site. Yeah. Yeah. What about the line of sight? That well, that's been debated several times, yeah. and uh, what is line of sight? The different people have different interpretations of what's a line of sight. Is it your property line so we can see out? No, it's the side. Yeah. You're right. supposed to build out farther than your neighbor, so your front of your dwelling is not to be built out any farther than the front of the dwelling of your neighbor, as to not block the line of sight. Or so that those are things that. Again, I'm very surprised sitting here listening. I thought these issues were taken care of. I've been listening to it for a year. I couldn't imagine being, and you know, we know each other, mm -hmm. and, and I know there's a, a decorum that we need to conduct at meetings to make sure things are handled in a yes, please, way. Sure. But I couldn't imagine if I was in their shoes and I've been fighting a mm -hmm. government to say, hey, what about me? You let this happen that started me and just imagine which one of you if that happened to you on a waterfront I, I do believe there just needs to be attention put to this that that was it i'm just surprised this is still ongoing thank you nancy since you guys don't understand the line of sight sight line thing let me read it to you like i read it to you last time sight line a line across the width of a lake or water body with flat which connects the point closest to the lake Anyway, so they show a thing. So I had 
if, if there is no principal structure located on a contiguous property as to the lot or parcel upon which the proposed structure is to be constructed, which Miss Jeff, Jeff Chimber's properties are, there was no, is all vacant land to the north of me, the sight line will be established from the point closest to the lake on the foundation of the next principal structure within 300 feet on either side of the lot on which the proposed structure is to be built. My house is 50 feet from Mr. Jimber's uh, buildings. He was allowed, this, man, this zoning administrator allowed this guy to put his building 27 feet in front of my foundation. And there's lots, like, like Pat mentioned at the last meeting, there's lots, vacant lots to the north of me, and there's vacant lots to the south of me. And if you read further on here, the sight line intended to provide adequate protection of the view of the lake for future development in the area. So I have vacant lots, and now I have a precedent set by the zoning administrator who allowed the building to be built 27 feet in front of my house. And I have vacant yep. lots now. So if you could buy a vacant lot next to my house, are you going to put your house in line with my house, or are you going to put it in line with the new line of sight 27 feet in front of my house? Is that protecting the future development in the area? Is that an What is that? This is the zoning. Ordinance. This is the zoning ordinance that the man should be reading. That he says it's, it's vague and we don't understand this. It's, it's clear. It says at the foundation. You can't you can't make this up. And I'm sorry that I'm here talking about this still, but this has been going on for 21 months. You would be frustrated if you lived next to a hotel and they built a hotel 27 feet in front of your house as well. Thank you. Yes, sir. Kirk on Lindsay Road. I guess I've been hearing about this a lot too. There's two outcomes. One is correct and nothing you can do about it. And the other outcome is something a mistake was made. But I'm not talking about solutions. So are you suggesting they get bulldozed or just say, sorry, my fault? Let's, let's talk about, about outcomes and not try to just rehash the history. Solutions. And just say, well, what, what, what possible outcomes can you have now? So say if it's everything important. is correct and zoned properly, then you just say, no more discussion about this, or what, what do you do now? You know, that, that might be worth discussing. You know, what, what's 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 the solution rather than just perpetual complaint? Exactly. Is there a solution proposed? Hopefully, we can arrive at that, that. But it, it seems to be that um, we're not headed in that direction at the not right now. Either. So. You made no attempt. So what? I mean, what are, what are the options? Like, you know, yeah, exactly. The building get moved back to the correct position in line with the zoning ordinance, or we get a settlement for property damages because the precedent has been set by allowing those to be there. And he's right that the lots on each side of us, when those lots get built and they are grandfathered in to be built on, even though they don't have an acre because of the Oak Park Shore subdivision, that they will be built in front of our foundation, boxing us in and completely removing our view that we used to have of the lake. And, I, you know, Mr. Herzog has said, well, that's not really the lake, that's the bay, and it's not really lake. That and is not correct. It's, well, you, I know we have your we have video saying here, sir. That. And I, honestly, that's insulting because just because it's not the blank open horizon does not mean it's still zoned lakefront residential. And if you like migratory birds, this is one of the most prime spots in the lake because the migratory birds flock into these shallow waters. Go ahead, Pat. Okay. So Derek and Amanda came into my office last, last Friday, correct? Yes. Okay. And I suggested to them that we get a meeting going. Um, that particular date fell through. That is my fault because I forgot that uh, elections was the day before, okay? I will get with you, Derek. I have been very busy with some classes and meetings last week and this week. I know that's no excuse, but I will be getting with you, getting together, hopefully next week, okay? We need to go on with this meeting for the business, yeah. please. I agree, last time you spent 11 minutes reading the email to me. I would just like a moratorium, again, short-term rentals until this is figured out while the zoning is being violated by the short-term rentals. I would like a moratorium against this. It is illegal, and if you say that the fence is like, oh, to block the sound, there should be no issues, but I can hear the people as they talk on their decks. He built his property four feet higher than the thing. He's got an eight foot fence. He has a fence okay, 40 all the way to Thank the you. lake. He has a Thank fence you. all the way to the lake. You gotta move on. Thank you. I think Joey has a question. I do have a question. 
Yes. Yes. Do you guys know that the way frames and Airbnb were coming into our township? Did you talk to any police officers, any state officials, anyone to see what the issues could be with these Airbnbs? Could Airbnb renters be the ones that are tearing up down at the pavilion in the boardwalk? No one can catch them, so are they Airbnb rentals? Did you guys even consider that? No. There is, there is a, uh, there has been a, uh, a, rent, a short term rental uh, Airbnb of this, which you want to call it, for about 10 years now in the township. More than one. And did you ever contact any state officials, any police officers to see what the issues with these Airbnbs bring into the township? Did you guys do your due diligence on that at all? And have you thought about bringing up new ordinances? These are relatively new, 10 years ago, we didn't have the internet. So, thank you. Oh, and also, please, for the love of God, seriously, just listen to Derek. Settle this with him. Everyone that comes to these meetings are tired of hearing about it, and it's not his fault. He's just holding your feet to the fire to get you to do it. I guess that's the end of my statement. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Yes. I'm Jeff Silver. Um, I've had the Airbnbs here in Lockery since 2014, so we've been doing it for a long time. Um, we do have, I would agree with them that we do need rules and regulations for Airbnbs because you hear a lot of horror stories. Um, ours in particular, we have a lot of those safety nets in place for the noise and things like that, partying and things like that. There are rules you can put in place on that. And I agree, there should be, the, all Airbnb should have something like that in place. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else? All right, let's move on. Approval of the minutes of the July 9th, 2024 Board of Trustees Amen. and the July 9th, 2024 Election Commission meeting. Unless you want to do them separate, but I don't think you need to. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think Most people good. have questions. the motion to accept this written for both the election meeting. Okay. Have we moved in? I'll second. We have support. support. Oh, excuse me. There's is two attendees. Um, Derek and Amanda were not on there. Okay. Probably weren't on there. Probably didn't sign in, so I didn't see their names. Okay. And I can add all of them. Okay. I make a motion to accept with with correction. With, with correction. correction. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. We have support. <coughs> uh, yeah, Penny has support. All right. We have a motion. We have support. We have uh, um, approval of the minutes with corrections. All in favor say aye. 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 Payment of the book bill. We have a motion to accept and pay the bills and we have support. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Figures report. Okay, uh, these are as of July 31st, 2024. I do have a couple of uh, corrections to make also. General Fund 239-6118, the Road Fund 153-452-18, Water Fund 9,141-86, Ditching 50,802-05, Trash Fund 89-066-31, Tax Fund 68-494-76, Mosquito 18-769-48, and Marijuana 221-277-06. Uh, the marijuana fund, we had the CD come due and that was closed out. We had 130000 in the CD that made interest of $2,990. Uh, so that one was closed out on 718 was put back into the marijuana fund. Uh, the other funds, the CDs and uh, the money markets are all shown there for you. 
Total funds of $1,647,784.51. Uh, changes that are to be made to Mosquito and the Gypsy Moss CD, uh, we're at 5.0053% and that went up to 5.1 for both of those funds. Uh, the Huntington money market was at 0.29 and that went up to 3.0. Okay, um, so those are the changes that are made. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Thank you. I move we accept the treasurer's report as presented. All right. I'll second it. We have a motion to accept the treasurer's report as presented. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Pat. All right. Board report. All great sentence with the uh, treasurer's report. Uh, wasn't much of a meeting. Uh, there wasn't a lot to talk about. Um, the meeting was held at Whitney Township. Uh, Tom gave his usual treasurer's report. Uh, nothing unusual about that. The only thing he pointed out was the purchase of a new trailer for the Gator. Uh, purchased from Richardson Equipment in Sandage for $4,898.25. Uh, as I pointed out before Kirk had been using his own trailer. Uh, Kirk reported that the firefighters responded to four down power lines, well, two personal injuries. Uh, both were car accidents, a gas leak at Huron Breeze, and an unattended fire. Uh, the fire department had a booth at the county fair and they had two people ask about joining the fire department, which is good. Well, you know. really. The next uh, meeting will be August 15th here at the Orgway Fire Hall. The meeting was 15 minutes? 10. 10. 10. <laughs> <laughs> took longer to drive, took longer to yep. drive there. But that's a good thing when there's not a lot to report. And, uh, no serious injuries, but yeah. Yeah. very drought. Well, I forgot my notes, but um, pretty much things are the same at the depot. I think they're winding up their concerts probably this week. Um, depot days are scheduled for October 5th and 6th. They've had the farmer's market there this summer, and the next meeting is the day after Labor Day, what is that? Yeah. Third, I think. Yeah, it September third uh, on a Tuesday, um, because of the how the Labor Day holiday. And when was yeah. the days? October fifth um, and sixth. Fifth and sixth. Okay. Thank and you. next year, the car show didn't have the turnout this year. The vintage car show, and it was um, it was July fourth weekend. They thought maybe that would increased attendance, but it seemed to look the opposite way. So next year it'll be the second Saturday in July instead of the first, evidently that was the first Saturday in July. Hopefully we'll get some more people come. That's all I got. Thank you, Jan. Mm -hmm. uh, go by there Friday and the farmer's market was really busy. It's, it, you know, it's amping up now because more people have produce yeah, to sell. To sell. Yeah. Yeah. Don't need an administrator. Uh, we, uh, <clears throat> we've got a project on, on uh, Santiago that's finally taken off. Uh, garage, mudroom, and sunroom in the back. And I see the, the uh, joist, the, uh, yeah, the ceiling uh, is getting ready to go up, the roof. Uh, there's a barn going to go up on, on uh, on our Gray Road, and I see some movement there. Uh, we had a house that just sold on Rumsey, and I'm kind of surprised it, it closed. And people talked to me last week; they're going to be moving in next week. Oh, wow. So that was a quick. And they wanted to put a barn in, a little prefab barn. And I told them they didn't need a permit. I just said to keep them the property lines and whatnot on that. Uh, and I'd like to uh, make a comment about. Uh, me uh, and allowing things to happen. When I issue a land use permit and I, we walk the property, let's say, and we get an idea what the measurements and everything are taken, 
Some people give us some beautiful uh, uh, site plans, and uh, we approve it. Now, I don't hold their hand. If they get a permit from the from the uh, county or the whatnot yeah. to build, and sometimes I'll go check and see how things are going, and sometimes I won't. And I'll use a good example: terms. They put a pound, they put their footings in, they started laying blocks, and all of a sudden, for some reason, instead of being 12 feet off the lot line like it was the first measurement, it was eight. We don't know what happened. They had to put in new footings. So we did catch that one. Now, over there on green, we we agreed that they were under the old rule and everything, and uh, I'm Eagle was involved, and they had to have room for a parking lot and whatnot. And uh, and uh, the I guess the, I, I would assume there are septic tanks there because the health department is involved. But I'm not a babysitter. I, I, that's not part of my job. I don't feel it's my part of my job. But if I want to be accused of allowing things to happen, that's far from the truth. There's some things that happen that I have no no control over. I know I was off the job for most of last year because of some people know, some people don't, we'll just leave it at that. Right. So some things might have happened when I wasn't here. So I just want to say that I'm not a babysitter and if you do, if you go against your site plan, shame on you. And if I get in there soon enough, I'll say something. But I can't do it all the time. It's just not going to happen. So. Same way with the building inspector. So. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Art. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Linwood Cemetery. Well, I have some real good news. We have ordered uh, the four benches and the four trash cans <coughs> for the cemetery. So. Um, I haven't um, heard when they're supposed to be delivered. Um, I haven't gotten an email. I didn't okay. give, we didn't talk today because you weren't in, but, the, uh, yeah. but then I, there was no email back from okay. them today. So, so but, but they're yeah. on their way. Yep. Uh, they're going to be green. They're going to look good. Uh, they'll be up on a cement base. And as soon as we find out when they're coming in, will contact our um, Sexton. Yeah, Sexton and uh, have him get ready for our benches. So. That'll be one of our steps tomorrow when you and I are out checking roads and digging. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we'll get an idea of where uh, to place them. Okay. Just for an idea. But uh, yeah, that'll be one of our steps. I have several rooms I want. I also had a, just on the subject of the cemetery, I had a call from somebody that wanted to know what the rules were about what they could do with a cemetery plot, you know, in terms of you know, decoration, uh, flowers, things like that. I have it on my desk. I forgot to give it to you. Or I was going to give it to you, too, and then, then say pass it on. I didn't know whether to pass that on to Barbara. Yeah, there was uh, so I had a general idea, but I didn't give her any indication. I said we'd give a call back. So I have a question. Jim, I trust that she spoke to Dominic about the being rough with everything out there. It needs to be made back around the headstones again. So please make sure that he takes extra care this time. Mm -hmm. And the weeds are coming up all right. So that needs to be mowed and be wrapped around the Yeah, as I told Penny, I'll be there. We'll be there tomorrow. Uh, we check in things out. So. Okay, thanks. Sir. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. In home business. Everybody's got this uh, layout and everything. Is it okay if I do it? Sure. Yeah. So everybody's got the layout. This is uh, this is streetlights on Manor and Dryer and Manor and Davis Road. We had a petition by Marilyn Bedore that wanted to put up a streetlight. And we thought, well, we got one there. We might as well put it on Davis Road. 
Uh, it took a while from the time that you know we talked about it last. We we uh, so we have a paperwork here where it shows how it's going to go in, and the cost of it is a hundred dollars for each light, which is quite reasonable <coughs> for a street light, in my opinion. Yeah. And they would put it up, and then of course the township pays for the the electricity that it would be there. So all we need to do is have a go ahead to pay this bill, and. Uh, then we can contact them, sign that, and contact them, and then get going with it. So yep. I know we all talked about it. We, I mean, we discussed it before. We basically approved it, other than the fact we didn't know what it was going to cost with the feasibility. So we really thought it was going to be more. I thought it was. I was really surprised. So because when they put when the when the light got the cobra light, which is what's going to be like the one at the end of the road here, the um, uh, the. When we put the one in on Shenfield Road to mark it on US 23, it was $100. And that was how many years ago? Oh, yeah. Six or seven now? Something like that. So, anybody have any questions? Are those solar or are they solar? No, they're electric. Yeah. So, if anybody has no questions, I'll make a motion to uh, pay the 200 and then get going. I second that motion. We have a motion and we have a second to uh, okay the street lights at Manor and Breyer and Manor and Davis. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Michael. We need to check with the road commission window where our signs are. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. All right, new business, driveway ditching. Right, we discussed this last month, and we had one estimate at the time, and uh, the board felt it was too high. And I contacted Woods Trucking and, uh, and Cyber, and uh, Woods Trucking, uh, Trucking and Excavating was the only one that got back to me. Uh, coming back, if you remember, was $32,000 to clean out the ditch on the north side of Jodway from Swenson to Santiago. Uh, if you need to look at the pictures again for a refresher, I have them. And they have to haul away. And, and all, all away. this will have to be hauled away, yes. Um, the uh, bid from uh, Woods trucking is uh, $19,650. Uh, the way the ditch is overgrown and clogged, there probably isn't a very good flow through there. So. Any questions? Any concerns? Is this uh, or what's anything in reference to the, the culverts? See, the culverts would be on that top of that. on top of that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Did you, by chance, take it, uh, were you able to look at any of the culverts on Godway to see what kind of condition they were in? Um, some of them looked all right, but some of them looked like they were pretty well had, too. All right. Uh, what would be your cost if we had to add those to the bill? Price of the culvert plus time to do it. Probably. How much? Eight, 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 eight. Six, seven hundred. Yeah. Oh, okay. Price of the culvert and all right. That would be the that would be the culvert and the time truck. No, just the time. Just the culvert and the time. Yeah. You think that should be? Yeah. I know when you did dryer earlier this year, your uh, invoice came in lower than the bid. So yeah, that was nice, and I appreciate that. I think we need an estimate and not and not to exceed in the in the motion. We can do that. All right. Possibly get uh, a new one from Mr. Woods with the culverts on and kind of so that he's not on the spot here as far as right. so he can look into how much it, it does cost him. Yeah, yeah that would be a good for the, and yeah. Yeah. Give us an idea of what the total cost <coughs> if you had to replace any okay. culverts. Yes, plus the culverts. Right. Yeah. Yes. All the culverts. 
Pardon me? Oh. No, only the one that the only the ones that need to be yeah. So that the culprits would be so, Do we want to wait another month or do we want to put a limit on this and see if he can work? We don't have any idea. Yeah. Yeah, just I don't know how much you call it. I think we should yeah, change what's on We're talking going towards, towards, you know, the time when we might not be able to have it. Yeah. That's what, that's what Jim's, I'm not concerned is to. It's yeah. probably yeah. still going to be um, much cheaper than going to the be. other. Mm -hmm. So right. I would suggest to approve this with the with changes made on the covers. Mm -hmm. Right. So we can say so, so we could do it. We could do an approval <coughs> on attending the you know the the revised. Right. We'll we'll do an approval based on this, but it'll be pending on what you come up with for culvert replacement. When I go through there, I think there were only two of them that I was concerned about. That you moved up. Mm -hmm. Did you see more than two? No, there could be, but uh, now that's all the way from Swenson to Santiago, and the culvert uh, under Jadway right at Swenson has been replaced. The road commission took care of that one. So we put a matrix. If there's only two, we figured it was about $800. For each of them, or eight hundred dollars each. Each. Yeah. Okay. So if we put a, so if we did it like for, for even even as like a not to exceed twenty. Twenty two thousand. Twenty two thousand. That would be agreeable. So eight and eight is sixteen. 16. What is it now? Nineteen. Nineteen six fifty. So that would be a little less than three thousand. Yeah. Well, we don't want to do like three thousand. Yeah. yeah. That. Okay. Our, our interest is, of course, to be able to. Twenty-three thousand. Yeah. Okay. We want to approve it for twenty-three thousand. Yeah, not to exceed. Not to not exceed twenty-three thousand. Does that work? I'll make that motion. So to approve the job, we just need to go ahead. On the spot. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, no, but if we wait, we have to have a special yeah. meeting to That's approve. That's not right. So, yeah. um, but if we do put a ceiling, then if it comes up. Oh. My concern is that we would have to have a special meeting in order to be able to approve yeah, it, we in don't order want to get to the project that. going. So I don't know. It, 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 that's just my view of it. We want to be fair, too. Yeah, we definitely don't want to be yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. And we are. Yeah. 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 And uh, at, at a cost of not to exceed twenty three thousand. And ten seconds. Right. We have a motion. We have a second to uh, do the Johnway ditching project from uh, Swenson to Santiago, and by woods truck uh, tr uh, construction, trucking and excavation. Excuse me, not to exceed twenty three thousand yeah. dollars. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Works for you? Works for us. All right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here for that. Yeah. I appreciate everybody coming for that matter. Yeah, for sure. Come on in. Yeah. Hi there. Hi. Thank you for having me. Uh, and if, if anybody saw the first draft of the uh, <coughs> division, now now I can see that it's 
that it's showing that. So basically what's going on is uh, Fritz Dore is purchasing property that is on the uh, north side of the jerky outlet. Two, there's a, there's, there's actually, it's actually one, it's two parcels. And then he's dividing the parcels into two different sections. Plus, uh, there's actually three divisions now. Did you see that? Okay, that, uh, that I did not notice until I was doing the copies. And then basically what he wants to do is he wants to use part of the property that faces 65 and, uh, and, then, um, and then he's going to build a house there. He's also going to enlarge the property into, uh, he's going to use some of the property for enlarging the uh, jerky outlets uh, business. Okay, so we have, we have the uh, thing. I have a letter here that came from, it's already been, it's already been passed the assessor. She got this information a while back, and she's written a letter to me that says, thank you so much for the information and explanation. I re I'm recommending that the Prince, Prince Door race split be approved by the township board. Have a great day, Kelly Reichenbach, which is our new assessor. So in the past, anything that whenever we had a land split or a combination, it had to be approved by the assessor, and then with her, with her approval, the board would go ahead and approve. So... Any questions on it that you have? You, uh, <coughs> some of you may not have seen the actual thing, but you knew about it. Yeah. We've been talking about it, you know, saying that, that this is something that's been in the works. And they're interested, of course, in moving forward with it. So I've been in contact with several people that have been talking to me and Pat. So how about you, Pat? You got any questions? Um, no. I, I, my only question would be on the um, personal numbers. And yeah. I didn't talk to Kelly about Kelly that. About that. So. Yeah. So they have that. So, yeah. So those can be worked out. So, that, if there is another thing, I'm making a motion to approve the lands. It's a split and a combination. So, there it will be. Um, so, we got a land division and a combination, which is $150 each. There's a check for $300 in the drawer already with it. And, and then, of course, the, uh, anybody that's do for considering splitting property or anything like that, the, uh, it's up to the uh, landowner to be able to do the legal work, get the survey, pay for the survey, and get the legal descriptions of the parcels that are being divided. And Kelly has that, she's approved it, so I'll make a motion for the board to approve. Okay, we have a motion. I second. We have okay. support. Any further discussion? All in favor of the land division and combination, say aye. 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 Thank you, folks. And then I will write, I will send off a thing to, to, uh, to um, uh, it's Bob Mumford. He's, he's in Bay Ridge, isn't he? Well, he has a house there, but, but uh, his he, he's, he's one that's, Okay, he's been doing that. So. Yeah. He's the one that's been behind it. And I said yeah. I would give him a flag of whether we approved or not. So. Yeah, Bob Mumford. I have at the back of your package, I've got a letter that came from uh, Greg Dittenberg, who is the, this is the Aranac County Historical Society, but we have one of the things that we can do with taxpayer money is to donate on any donate money to a, 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 a business, not a business, whatever. Donate money to anything that promoted the uh, historical nature of the township. So that is one of the those are one of the things that we can spend taxpayer money on. And you know, we've been donating five hundred dollars to the to this, and this is going to our historical museum. It's, it's, it's shown on the letter as Amer uh, the letterhead is coming from the Aranac County Historical <coughs> Society. But we specifically say this money is to go to the the the, the oh, all, right. all gray historical society is what it is. And then it says um, in this it says your ongoing support and generosity allows us to continue important mission of protecting and preserving history of the county. So I didn't know if we have we have chance now we can give more money we can give less money, we cannot do it at all. So I, I just want to present that and see. We usually do it this time around every year uh, for the past three years. I think we started in 2022 as the first time. It's a good donation. That's what I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and it's a need there because yeah. we have 
Now Joanne Gulau, who was quite a driving force for that, she's right. she's you know in a facility now. She's not doing anything more there, and, and like like all the rest of us, the people that volunteer are getting older. Yeah, unfortunately, it happens. Any discussion? What do you guys think? What about the raising it? Yeah, that's what I was. To a thousand. We certainly have the money. I mean, we got we got a hundred thousand dollars from the excise tax on the marijuana, and that money is on the uh, marijuana of the on the, the retail outlets. So I mean, it's not like we're laughing for you know, that. We got that. I know we talked about it last time about raising it last time, and I guess it was decided that it's five hundred dollars. So we have a motion. I I would make a motion to donate a thousand dollars. <laughs> we have a motion. We have support to donate a thousand dollars to the Internet County Historical Society. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Thanks, folks. I'm there. They will really be thrilled. I'm glad. Contract with Robert J. Ebert as township attorney. As we know, Melissa Sprague has changed the direction of her practice, so we had to find a new attorney. Uh, Michael and I talked to uh, Robert Effert. We had an interview with him. And we had an interview. Uh, he was the attorney at, what, about 15, and 20 years ago? 2010 was when he was, okay. he was asked to not be the attorney anymore. Well, Jan can report on that with the thing that she was. Um, I'd rather not. Okay, yep, I was just, all I knew at the time, I was, I started, I became clerk in 2010. Okay, I was, a, I was a deputy clerk during the summer and I was elected in 2010 that, because no one ran against me, amazingly <laughs> enough. No one ever runs against me, amazingly enough. And uh, I that I had, you. that it was, it, it, they, it, to me that it seemed that there was difference of opinion by other members of the board at the time, one specifically, I don't need to mention, that found that effort was not available when he needed and wouldn't answer necessarily stuff in a timely manner, so. Beautiful. Oh, you're good, yes, yeah, you're good. Know. you're good. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank you, appreciate it. Don't ever hesitate to, you're, you're not interrupting, so. You need help? So that, that's all I knew at the time, not having had to actually dealt with him or whatever. When Jim and I talked to him, he came in, he, he answered all the questions. His uh, rate is what, $175 an hour? Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember. So that was the uh, division of the corner intersection. Uh, good question. Good question. Uh, I'm working on that. Uh, I'll be in touch with you. Uh, I'm talking to the road commission, and they're going to do some ditch mowing. So I'll be in touch. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for bringing that up too. That is that is important. So we um, so uh, anyway, 175 dollars an hour. The question is that we seem more than confident. The different things that we do add them that is you know in you know that we've been talking about and the different things and everything. I was I was impressed. He's reviewing the uh, citation and the new version of the blade ordinance right now, which will have to go before the planning commission. Mm -hmm. so, I had one question I called him about concerning uh, the uh, new assessor. Uh, he gave me a favorable answer on that. So. Do we need a motion? Yeah, and I think that um, we should. Your motion, I suppose, what we would probably would want to have to be pending on is what kind of contract he did. We asked him something about that, and I can't remember what his response was. He told us what he charged for the hour. Yeah, that or do we about, need something that, that you know, where we had. You, that's because, about the way he left it. Oh. Yeah. So, we'll go ahead and. Uh, if the last board had enough of a reason to release this guy, isn't there other attorneys out there to look at? Yeah, actually, there aren't that many. The ones we contacted, we contacted other people, and uh, we had there were conflicts of interest. 
And then, uh, you know, so, I mean, it's not like we just chose this guy out of the blue. <laughs> I believe, so. Okay. Well, whatever. Yeah. So, so I'll go ahead and make a motion that we can give a contract with him and whatever, we'll see what, review, by the way, reviewing whatever paperwork he has. If he has any, if he has any. One thing, if we have issues, we can always uh, end our yep. uh, relationship. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if you have a contract? Mm -hmm. We didn't have a contract with Melissa. We should not have a contract. No, we shouldn't. That's what I'm that's okay, what I'm just, kind of just retain him. Yeah, it? just yeah. retain him. Yeah. All right, yeah. I agree with that then. So. Okay. Okay, so I'll change the motion to retain effort yes. as, uh, as our town tip attorney. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, gosh, I must have called, I don't know, three or four different attorneys. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I made the motion <laughs> and we take it from there. Yeah. All right, we have a motion to retain Robert J. Effort as the township attorney. A second. Uh, we have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Board comment. I have something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that we're going to have a new attorney, I would like them to look over the retirement Good idea. plan. Good idea. Because I brought that information. I don't want to say I have issues with it, but I guess I do. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think Michael does as well. Yeah, I don't have that. There's, there's a lot of problems. Yeah. Um, Just to get his um, input yeah. on it. All right. And perhaps we should think of another alternative. Okay. That's doable also. Okay. Uh, I contacted Paul, who does the uh, roadside mowing, and asked him to go ahead with a second mowing. You had some concerns about dust. Uh, Penny and I are going to go out tomorrow checking some roads. I'll make a note of the ones that I feel really need attention first. I hope you're going to go see mine. <laughs> we always We're going to be road. here on your road, believe me, uh, mm. definitely. Uh, I also talked to the road commission and they're going to do some ditch mowing for us. We're going to do uh, Manor Road from Santiago to Davis. And I ask them to do Gordon Road from Santiago to the end. So uh, those ditches really need to be mowed out. So, mm -hmm. Is yeah. it down in, in the ditch or just the sides of the ditch? No, down in the they're ditch. Get those yeah. Yeah. Out, yeah. Really Paul, Paul does the right. shoulder and the road commission does down in yes. the ditch. That's so. a man or road down there. You can't even so, see yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, could you yeah. please check out my road? On my side, <laughs> <Little one. laughs> yeah. because it looks so crappy. There's people who go down to the cemetery, and I cannot get after Chuck went through and supposedly fixed my ditch. It's almost at a 85 degree angle, and there's no way I can get in there to take care of it myself. <coughs> That's the purpose of our mission tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. I just. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes, sir. I'm Greg Curry. Um, while you're talking about the dip signal um, from Davis Road, well, actually, Dryer Road to Big Creek, um, the bottom of the dips is right up to the top of the tubes. And where the water drains not very well. Which are, okay, uh, from Dave, uh, Dryer Road. 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 And then when you get past Davis Road, from there to the creek, that's grown up so bad back there you can't you can't get the muskrat can't even get through there. I'm not yeah, I'm just saying, you know, yeah. it, it's really it's really bad right now. Well, we can go farther if we need to. Yeah. I just would appreciate if you could check that out, you know. Sure. Well that's the idea. Yeah. 
I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, if we can't keep the water flowing, people are going to have yeah, problems. We've had water in our yard the last two years, and we've never had water in our yard. I, want I don't to want to pump it across the road, but I can, but I mean... No, yeah, I, really don't that. <laughs> I want to go across the manor also to see how that's holding up. Yeah, I, I thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. That's what we're here for. <coughs> Any more board comments? I have something, but I can't remember what it was. So. All right. Public comment. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, the Kirk off the road. I guess I was thinking, well, we'll take that. Yeah. Because I just remembered. You had something? He's no. saying go ahead. Oh. Oh, okay. No, you, you were talking. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. Yeah, I was waiting on the board comment part, but I guess a thought came to mind when you guys were discussing the attorneys, and this is just a thought comment. A lot of this, what about Sims Township? You know, what about those other townships that are, you know, they probably all have attorneys. Is there a way to mm -hmm. kind of consolidate effort and, and just have a, a regional campaign? Generally not. Like busy or Gen not? Generally they don't. When we, whenever we would contact a, a township, uh, somebody else that was doing it, they generally would say, I'm representing to, uh, Sims Township, and there would be a conflict. Yeah. Whenever there was a top, whenever there was an attorney on a border, mm -hmm. you generally would have it. You got that reply. You said that 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 could be a conflict of interest. That's what we got as a reply from a lot of the ones that we talked to. Was there's a conflict of interest. So One township on didn't mean to speak over you. <laughs> so go ahead. Anybody else? Speaking of Manor Road, there's a couch on Manor Road. Yeah, I got it. Please get that out of there. Yeah. <laughs> we lost that. been there for how long? We yeah. lost our truck there. Jim and I were the ones that went around and picked all this stuff up. And the mattresses that are right there across from you that I keep, you know, you try to get on top of my car and bring them in and stuff like that. People are just throwing them out? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, are there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, come on, you so live in this township long enough to know people do that. So I just need to call you to pull them off the bridge after us. <laughs> <And>, uh, <laughs> yeah. When I had a truck, Michael and I would go around go picking up up. mattresses and uh, anything else that was left. Take them to my house so they get picked up. Why would you help picking them up on their big, large pickup day? They see them in the ditch. They don't see them as a garbage pickup. And the and the and the couches in the middle that's of the manor road. Yeah, that's why we would take them to man, uh, yeah. Michael. That's why we would have to pick them up. I mean, yeah. Oh. I think it's I think it's a different to pick up something that's Let's sitting out by your mailbox as compared to digging something out of a ditch. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Yeah. Yeah. This is in the ditch. The couches in. The no, the couches kind of belong on the side. Remember when? Because there, remember there was ones down there by um, by Tremble's thing that what didn't Parker take that over yeah, and there was that those were set out I ended up putting that in my uh, breaking them up putting them in my back seat <laughs> oh my to take it home you know to get it out there I mean that's we, we did try to keep it used to be um, that was one thing with the tire drive is that when we first started that tires were everywhere we paid Dennis on um, you know to go ahead and yank the stuff out of the big crack and. How far is that mat or that couch from your house? Pardon? How, how far is oh, that couch? Just, there's a mattress and a couple of camper trailers. Yeah, is that that's what you're talking? Had, yeah. Oh, um, the south couch side. is halfway oh, down yes. Manor Road. Yeah, uh, I think I can have GFL pick that up next Monday. Yeah, yeah, we could try either that or get a wedding room to do it. Uh, I, I think they, <laughs> yeah, I'll call GFL. I think they'll pick that up for us. Yeah. They, they, they really work well with us. So. Yeah. I need a reminder to call them in the morning. It's right next to West Cumbie's property, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, quite a ways down. Well, there's other property. Down. There's another property where Kyle Schwartz lives. It's kind of in the middle of between Dryer and uh, Davis Road. But yeah. there is mattress. But there is garbage pickup along there, so it, 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 yeah, yeah, there's no garbage cans out there at that property, though. Right. So yeah. they don't know this. They so don't they stop. stop so. yeah. I'll ask them to pick it up anyhow. See what they say. Right, thank you. Yep. Alright. Anybody else? I, yes, sir. Me? Sweet. I got two things. Uh, so earlier today, this is just at the, at the comment, the zoning administrator said it's not his duty to hold people's hands and hold people accountable to what the permit says. Um, Actually, I've been asking the township for several for a while now, calling almost every day to get this document. And here's a contract with the Aubrey Township Zoning Administrator. 
I, unfortunately, this is from 2002, but this is the document that has been provided from the Township Board. Duties. Uh, for zoning Administrator will, will be responsible for all functions of Zoning Administrator, including zoning inspections, issuing zoning land use permits, and zoning enforcement. Uh, and then it has compensation of how he'll be compensated for each of these duties. Every site visit he does, he gets paid $28. You know, so I don't know if you even have a contract with Mr. Gallup or not. No, well, I don't think so because this is 22 years old, and I don't know what they have. Because I've been asking if they, if, if he knows That's his all duties. I have. Does he know his duties? Because he says he's not supposed to enforce these things, and but he does sometimes, and he says does not other times. Anyways, um, if you look at the permits that were issued from. Uh, the zoning administrator, they were approved without showing anywhere on the property where the buildings were going to be built. He just has a picture, and I invite anyone up here to come look at these. I, I, I have, it doesn't show anywhere on the property where these buildings are going to be built, yet he still approved them. Um, and if you look at, and if you actually look at these documents, he actually didn't approve them because it shows where he's supposed to click approved or disapproved. He didn't do either or. He just signed it on 11-2 of 2022. And also at the top here it says application fee must be paid before application will be processed. Uh, these applications were paid for a week after they were processed. The guy got a building permit the next day, two days, well, two days after, sorry, uh, from, the, from the building permit place and code enforcement in Pinconi. For whatever reason, the Aubrey Township is choosing to use a company out of Pinconi when the Aranac County has its own building department. And I spent an hour at the building department yesterday. They said they would never issue a building permit without a septic and sanitary permit. This man didn't have a sanitary permit for over seven months after these buildings were approved on the zoning permit and the building permit. So they should have never happened. These were legally built buildings. Thank you. I'm not quite done yet. Um, you have two minutes or two minutes are up. I would like to respond to the to the question that you had about why we use area code enforcement. Sure. That was there, that we have used area code enforcement since I became clerk. And the reason why, because the county was unresponsive. When a contractor comes in and wants to get a building permit and has to wait until they happen to be working at the county, which was two days a week at that time, they, contractors need their building permits when they want to start their work. And so we went with area code enforcement. They have been perfect for us. They've, and we they have no complaints with them. He doesn't follow the rules. I'm, I'm not. I'm answering the question you asked about why we went to area code enforcement. That is all. You're required by law to have a sanitary permit before you get a building permit and before you start building your house. These houses were built, and the sanitary permit wasn't issued for five months after these buildings were built. Okay. And they were legally built 27 feet in front of my foundation. This has nothing to do with Eagle. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks. The website looks very good. Thank you, guys. Anything else? Yes, sir. I refer to my notes. <laughs> I got a phone call from a, a widow down on Rumsey, and uh, before her husband passed mm -hmm. just recently, uh, there was going to be a fence put up. Mm -hmm. Well, then she just kind of let it go when she was going through that. She called me the other day and she wants to know if it can still be put up between her garage and the corner of her house, the line of fence. I was down there, in fact, I was there today, I drove by, and the neighbor, his his collection has exploded. I mean, the stuff he's got there now, it's unbelievable. Who is that? On Rumsey? No. On Point Arbery. Point Arbery, I'm sorry. Yeah, we know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I do, yeah. Okay. Right on the curve. Right on the curve. It, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable. I agree. That's unbelievable. Yeah. And also, up here on Swenson, a friend up there, she's got, she's built an animal enclosure and she's got, she's keeping, I don't know what kind of animal she's keeping in there, but it's all made of a scrap lumber and boxes and it's, yeah. uh, I don't think what she'd run down there is very sanitary. I mean, you're, you're allowed to farm, the right to farm, right? but this is not farming. I don't know what the heck's going on there. You've already sent the health department there. She's just growing some chickens. So. Yes, Your Honor. I know everybody wants to go home. Do we have a specific ordinance, whether you're agricultural or residential or the lakeshore on fences? Right there. Right there. That's not what she asked. No. That's not what she asked. 
No, you want the ordinances. The ordinances are there for each specific, whether it's forested, uh, lake shore, lake, lake, uh, Offense. You didn't listen to for, the question. For, for fences. One at a time, please. You for, don't have to perform. Yeah, for yes. fences. Yes. We, we actually have ordinances on the type of fence someone yes. can put up, Whoa. whether yeah. you're agricultural, lakeshore, or residential. Yes. Right. Okay. There's not. Uh, no, there is. There's not a fence ordinance no, whatsoever. Sir. He's not. He doesn't know. I thought that when you that you go to the you go to the front of the house, it can be six foot. At that point, it's got to drop down to 36 inches. It's got to be a picket fence. I thought that was spelled right that out is, here. That is in there in the beginning. That is in there. Lakefront yeah. residential yeah. only. Yeah. Is that, is that uh, just for lakefront residential only? That's lakefront residential, residential only. only. Yeah. It has to go down to 36 so inches. So yeah. for agricultural for and just residential, only lakeshore, but residential, right. agricultural, there's residential. no rules on right. fence. Yeah. That is correct. Right. And we don't issue a land use permit or a zoning permit for a fence. The fence that she wants to put up is from her garage <coughs> to her house. Okay, then to block what's next door. She wants to put up a six foot high vinyl fence, solid vinyl, and that's legal. Right. Now, if she wants to go beyond the house, it's got to drop down to three foot, and it can be a picket fence or whatnot. But, Something yeah. see through. But, yeah. I didn't know. I didn't I, know. Yeah. We also yeah. have some fencing issues. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm in that situation, and it, uh, it's, getting, worse. it's getting much worse. Yeah, but Aren't yeah. they supposed to take a trailer out of there? And they have. Yeah, that's what I want to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. Now, there's two others that I'm not going to say where they are or what they are. Uh, that's for another time. Yeah. I think you know where they are. Though. Yeah. Okay. Uh, have you noticed one of the double deckers is gone over on green? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's really cleaning that up. Yeah, yeah. he's working on that. Yeah. All right. I, wrote, I wrote him a letter and uh, yeah. uh, he and I had a pretty nice conversation. So. All right. Yes. I have a comment. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that the tire. The trailer with the tires in it is not full. Yes. And it will be, will be bringing some again. And it will be here hey. until Wednesday. We <laughs> thought it was only here on Saturday. Yeah, and then no. we came through on Sunday and threw a bunch of them. It will be here tomorrow. So yeah. tomorrow's the last day? It'll, It'll be until next, next Wednesday. Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Next, I'm sorry, next Wednesday, okay. yes. Next Wednesday. And then we're, we have another junk day coming up. September 16th. Okay. Yep. <coughs> and if you've got too big to get them in there, just drop them on the ground and we'll get, you know. But if, you're, if your husband can pitch them or whatever. I pitch uh, them and he them. Good. Good deal. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean. So we're, our trailer goes pretty much, you know. Oh, good. Yeah, to bring as many as you got. I just checked it tonight and it's still, uh, there's still a good third of the room left. Not to mention upwards. It states that we had a really good team of young young men that, that uh, worked it since my back is terrible and, uh, and then we had it, but they did a real bang up job. They, they, yeah, it looked really they, good. They, I mean, much better than like the last time we had a problem where the avalanche stalled uh, one time and then you can't restack them. You got to just try to throw more on top. So they they really got it packed and well. I I was very impressed with them. I would, one thing we were talking about when we did that, well, obviously we had election on Tuesday, primary election. We had 338 voters altogether, uh, of which um, 117, I think, were absentee votes. So we had a, quite a good turnout for a primary. So, so just to let you know, and, and I'm sure you see in your packet, these are the results. It, it's kind of, con it seems kind of, you know, how it follows, but I follow the way that the ballot went. So you kind of got to read through to see the, what the race you're looking for. So, okay, that's all I got. All right, thank you. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, in 2010, we pulled a permit for our pole barn mm -hmm. and for zoning. So I don't know what changed from 2010 to now, but at that time we had to have a schematic drawing with our side, rear, front, you know, exact footage of anything, everything, where it was going to be placed on our property. Mm -hmm. 
and we could not move forward with anything until we had that complete drawing with all the dimensions on it. It couldn't just be a circle in here, I'm gonna put it here. We had to have that. So I don't know what changed with zoning from then, but I think that needs to go back to that. Um, another thing with culverts and the ditching. So typically MDOT, Road Commission, and Drain Commission. Property owners are responsible. And I think about this up like four or five years ago, I had yep. a question with you. Um, they're responsible for the culverts, and you know, the property owner is. And at that time, he said, well, you were paying the township on this road ditching that the millage should everyone pass, that you were paying for just a couple culverts that wasn't going to be routine. Is this what you've moved forward now, that all culverts will be replaced by the township board using the ditching? No, I, I'll have to get a location of where the culverts are that need to be replaced. And we'll contact the property owner like we did on Sunday. Okay, Island. so the property owner is still responsible for that right. cost. Yeah. Um, but, but one of the possible ones that if that is what you're going to do is say we'll pay as a township for those, you have those marijuana funds and possibly the, mar the culverts on as you go through projects. We have how many houses in the yeah. 600, say 700, yeah. Home, yeah. say with culverts, 000, that's $700,000. When you're only collecting 56000 a year on ditching, that's going to take a long time before everyone's culverts sure. are replaced. Yeah. Yeah. spend the money on that. You, they and can't take the marijuana money for that. Well, well, the on, the, on the excise tax money, money we put. Yeah. 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 And you can also technically, John Way does lead as a road yes. to get to the township hall. Yep. So you could still use the okay. marijuana funds, not the excise tax but from the marijuana. For the regular money. For that. I mean, there's ways to maneuver sure. so that those ditching, right. those ditching funds stay as ditching that funds. Ditching, and then use the culvert using mm -hmm. your other funding. Yep. My, my, my goal is to get the project completed as soon as possible. And, um, uh, and Okay, and just one more thing, building department, has been seven days a week since I've been at the county since 2009. I'm sorry, five days a week, sorry, not sorry. Five days a week, full time, have been since 2009. So that is an option, and I do think that would probably maybe assist with the township as keeping things in order, such as when there's a building permit, then A, B, and C need to follow with that. So you don't get in a predicament where you don't have these kind of things happening in the future because those agencies talk to each other and get it done so that's less up of your back as a county yeah. or township. I county. Uh, will gladly stop in and talk to them. Okay. Yeah. I'll be down that way Friday, in fact. Yeah. Um, and talk to some other townships that use them and see what their their feelings are, mm -hmm. you know, how they feel the responses that would be. You know, see how this Yes. Um, yeah, in our experience, it was kind of difficult to get a hold of area code enforcement because there's only someone there between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. in the mornings. And getting a call back from them has been equally challenging. Um, my next comment would be just to the citizens of Auger Township. And I want to know how you would feel if the equivalent of an unregulated motel that had between three and 20 guests a day opened up next to your house, and the township ignored your pleas to work on zoning for this. Because this is an issue, it's gonna become more of an issue, and it's it's not fair to residents who bought property in a residential area to all of a sudden live ne next to a rotating door of people. Um, my other comment would just be a plea to the zoning, or the planning commission, to start to regulate this. Um, Patricia, I know I sent you so many PDFs in that email that I'm sure you haven't had time to review all of them, but there's a lot of great provisions that other um, other townships in the Northeast region and in Northern Michigan in general have adopted, and I think that's a great starting point to figure out what we can do to start zoning short-term rentals because they're not gonna be going away. Um, my last comment would be for Mr. Gallup, in that I'm confused that you occasionally do put cease and desist orders on properties when they violate 
the provisions of their zoning application. For example, my friend Alicia Van Sickle applied for a whole barn permit and then she had her sanitary permits in place but she bought, brought a used garage that was undersized to her property to be a dwelling. And it was, you put a cease and desist order on that and when asked for a variance at the Planning Commission on April 24th, 2023, Mr. Young said that if you did a variance, it would set a new precedent. But I'm confused because there's a precedent that's been set by allowing undersized structures already. Can I add to that? I'd also like to add that Alicia Van Sickle's parents are Karen and Larry Van Sickle, who built probably the most beautiful houses and up our tax rate in this township. So I don't understand why it was an issue to even give her a variance so that way they could help her finish building their house. How many times have they moved garages in here and redone them? That's just a question I'd like to know. I think the comment was it's a garage. Turned into, <laughs> so it turned, was in, their first turned into a resident. All right. And so was how many of their homes that they have built? If I may say. I went in there, had a long talk that day, and I approved a 32 by 48 whole barn with power and plumbing. So I told her what she had to do, right? There was, there was, next thing I know, and Jim will agree with me, there's a garage in there. Yeah. And it's been a battle ever since. But, Why are you but I, I approved it, so we had a site plan, everything. Now. I mean, that was there, what are we going to do? It was, I don't think there was ever intention of building a coal bar. You know, violated their site plan. That's right. And as far as site plans, I have asked for site plans. I've gotten some very good ones. I've, uh, there's been sometimes when what's on the, on the form is not what's given, it's the site plan given. You, I've given them, I've handed them in to you folks. So, yeah, so uh, it's, um, like I say, that one down there, that's been a bad. There's been promises made, but not. We don't even go so far. I'm sorry, I know Larry Van Sickle personally, and I've known Karen Van Sickle since I was born. They're not unreasonable people. I've known Derek and Amanda, I've known Amanda for, I don't know how many years, Derek, I met you when I was working at home. Cold farm, yeah. They're not unreasonable people. Why are you battling township residents? I, you battled me when I've got 30 dogs in next to me in a junkyard in the backyard and it's no fence. And you battled me. I mean, why do you guys battle the residents I got? Sitting here as a resident, I yeah. think this has gotten out of hand and you're picking on Mr. Gallup. And I think in some incidents, what has happened is that people have been unscrupulous um, in their dealings with him. Uh, going against what they say they're going to do and they do something different and then that's not his fault he, If they've done it behind our backs, we're not aware of it I think going forward we've got to come up with some idea where the township goes back against these people that did different than what their plans were and what they applied permits for and didn't stick to it I, I can agree that it's not his fault when people go behind our <coughs> back and move things or represent themselves wrong. And once something's been built as a, a board, you're having a hard time going and saying, okay, now you've got to tear the building down. But we've got to have something in place going forward that these people are being held to fire, that if they do things wrong, they're the ones that's going to have to suffer, not not us or Mr. Gallup or, or you. The people who built it and did it wrong are the ones that are wrong. Thank you. There, there are stipulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And I mean, it sounds like you know, if you do a job, yeah, yeah, people aren't. It's time to go home, folks. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. The end of public yeah. comment. Yeah. Let him finish. Let him finish. It just seems like, yeah, at some point in time, people are going to ignore the, the rules. You've got to hire a new attorney. It's time. To, <coughs> it's time to get attorneys involved and just hash it out in court. And make a solution. Otherwise, this is next month we're going to be talking about it. And next month we're going to talk about it. I agree. I agree. I agree. Is, is sure. that you're right. Just need to go to the court. Somebody, somebody did some. They did wrong. The people who did it did wrong. Not Mr. Gallup. No. All right. We don't That's want it for to tonight. <laughs> we need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Thank you. All right. Motion. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
Thank you for Thanks. coming. <coughs> If anyone would like to see the zoning permits that Mr. Gallup approved to don't show where the building is going to be built, I have them right here. Five months late? Yeah. Me too. Okay. You know why that happened? Nobody People are doing what they want to do, and nobody can follow up. No, I can't even remember when you guys did the election, and we were so appreciative.
Well, he said he went he went south. Yeah. We had yeah. 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 for yeah. a survey. Yeah. 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 We thought it was September. I thought it was August. You told me start camera. I thought it was Ten feet away.
I can I can send you documents I can get one to you know what the yeah. yeah. to get it uh, yeah. okay. Okay. adopted I guess you you're talking no I Oh yeah. One of the things that one of the things when we started to address that, you know, then they, there was a push by the you know, by the realtors and everything to make sure the township had no basically where it is now. So much yeah, that the idea that you have the yeah, the base payer would be the I said, I was in the MTA documents and the They got in any I would start. I would you can only you can only regulate what they allow basically. I mean you can't tell them what they can do. You basically can go along with what they are allowing and it's called experience on that board. She has a we have uh, a yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Not for and then same with the like the wind. Oh, wind is basically dead in our country because of the fact yeah, that absolutely. you can't be within so many feet of the bay. Yeah. So many yeah. you know, miles. Oh, yeah. right. so, we have a wind. Are you sick? Where did it go? I'm like, where did it go? We try to do the same as the zone. That's fine. She wanted to give me house. And that's okay. Okay. We saw it. Are you done? Are you done with your girl? No. Okay. I'm going to text you, Jenny, and I'm going to be all like, you're going to be happy. That's right. That's right. The only thing you can, the only thing you can do, basically, is to, you can have an hour and a half, and not try to go over and above what they're already allowed to do. So what's the point? Okay, all right. See you, Pam. Thanks for attending. Oh, I'm going to do it more often. Good. Good deal. How are you getting home? Oh, good. Thank you. See you, Bill. Okay. I am like, yeah. uh, I am I am I I am I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I uh, I'd rather come with you. Yes, you know, you're you yeah, we go in that. Sure, it wasn't that in the zoning permit doesn't show. You know, those had not been. Every time there was a question about that, people were talking about it. 
a four drawer pizza and you don't need a lot of people to do it. We can help them out. 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 I enjoy it. I do here. I record in Portsmouth, which is a good time. They're down by Ingle Safe. Yeah. I'm always open to that. Where's that? Yeah. Uh, I can yeah. produce the work. We're off to be part of the county. Yeah. 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 It makes sense. They saw that things weren't working well for them. So they said, let's go start our own business. And now we've got a guy who's doing well. And now the 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 guy who's doing well.